Good evening. Tonight's programme is all about the C5. Will it? Can it succeed? There's a lot resting on it, not just for Sir Clive and his multi-million pounds investment, but for Wales too, because it's being built at Merthyr. Several hundred jobs are at stake. But first, what exactly is it? Well, here it is. Six foot of plastic with foot pedals and an electric motor not unlike the one that drives your washing machine. The road tests were held in the dead of night when nobody was about. Secrecy has been everything. But won't people feel let down when they realize the C5 isn't like a family car? <sighs> it's easy to laugh, isn't it? But as John Humphrey said, a lot of jobs depended on the success of the Sinclair C5. I think we're all in it together. You know, we feel as if we're all one body rather than a them in a situation. I really like it. Do you think the uh, vehicle will be a success? Well, we all hope so, but I think uh, we all favour being impressed by it, absolutely. Yeah, I think it will be, definitely. I think it'll be a success. Why do you think it'll take off? Well, uh, once the children start seeing it, you know, it's so cheap to rent. And if the price is right, I think it'll sell. You know, we're all totally committed to it as a workforce, and we intend to see that it is a success. Oh dear, oh dear. That's probably what Daleks look like when they're undressed. The Sinclair C5, this new way of getting about, was going nowhere. Mirtha was stuck with making washing machines. The Six O'Clock News from the BBC, with John Humphreys and Jill Dando. Hoover have announced the first phase of what they say will be significant job cuts. They're losing more than 200 jobs immediately, most of them at their Merthyr Tidville plant. Workers at Merthyr Tidville's Hoover plant have become the latest casualties of a week of bad unemployment news for the South Wales Valleys. 125 jobs were cut here today, more will follow in the coming weeks. Hoover says high interest rates have cut sales of the washing machines they produce. When one thinks there were more than 5,000 jobs at the factory inside a decade ago and we're going to be closer to 1,500 if all these jobs go, you can see what a sorry, sad blow this has been to our community and to, the, and to Merthyr and, to the, of course, to the individuals concerned. Union leaders were locked in talks all day, but workers were clearly shaken by the announcement and fear more bad news could be on the way. A sad day for Merthyr because we not only the men, yeah, it's the ancillary, you know, the shops, the various other things, and it's really looking bad. By 1992, workers at the Merthyr factory had had their hours cut as the unsold washing machines piled up. Hoover's American owners, Maytag, wanted them shifted fast. So the marketing directors came up with an incredible promotion. A simple demonstration of what you can pick up if you spend over £100 on any Hoover product. We'll give you two return flight seats to either Rome, Vienna, Sierra Nevada, the Canary Islands, Munich or the Costa del Sol. Unbelievable. And for a while it looked like Maytag had got what it wanted. Takeup of the offer was phenomenal. Hoover customers were keen to be flying off to Rome, so Hoover appliances were flying off the shelves. There was an immediate objective. Sell product, sell it quickly, clear out your warehouses. And on the face of it, this particular promotion did exactly that. It worked incredibly well. The European campaign was working so well that the offer was extended to America. Big mistake. Spend over £100 on any Hoover product and we'll give you two return flight seats to either New York or Florida. Two return flight seats. Unbelievable. And somebody who didn't believe it were Hoover's insurers who refused to cover the American promotion. The American side of the campaign went wrong because the flights were so valuable and people who were wanting to fly to the States were buying a Hoover so they can get their free flight. And the values involved, the fact that the flight may have cost two or three times more than the cost of the Hoover, then things are going to go wrong. From not having enough work to do, the men and women on the Hoover production lines had too much work to do. Many people were on overtime to meet a demand that looked like it would never be satisfied. The company processing the free flights applications were just as busy. By the end of 1992, 100,000 people had applied. In Merthyr, people were shaking their heads. 
Hoover customers spending £100 on a Hoover appliance were claiming £600 worth of plane tickets. How could that be a good business plan? It was also bemusing. Mm. We, I, I can remember being rather bemused and bewildered. And certainly people who were, man, who were managers at the, at, at, at the plant were being constantly asked, what, what's going on? We're not a Hoover's not a charity, and you felt almost like a charity. People felt it was like a charity. Hoover was in crisis. By March 1993, more than 200,000 people wanted free flights. For the time being, Elwyn and June Davis's dream holiday remains just that. They and their daughter bought Hoover cleaners so they could take their eight-year-old granddaughter Danielle to Disney World in Florida. It's now four months since they applied for their free tickets, and they're getting worried. We're very apprehensive about whether this is going to come off and I would be most disappointed because I, you know, there must be many people in our position with families who tell children that they're going to go to America, which is something, and to Disney World, something that every child wants to do and she would be extremely disappointed. We're just waiting to hear now and we've been waiting quite a while. Are you worried you won't get your holiday? Yes, we are.